So you're out there looking for your first house. Wow, this place is amazing. Look, they even have a little wooden man. <laughs> That's so awesome. Or maybe it's a step up. God, I can't believe this. A master on the main with the washing machine. And look at this. It's like a Nest thermostat thingy. I don't even know how to operate it. Woo! How cool is that? Or perhaps it's your dream home. God, this is my dream home. Look, they've got logs in here. I mean, that's, wait a minute. What is this? Oh my gosh, $100 bill. They must have cut down a money tree. This thing could be, like, it could be everywhere. This is glorious. Yes. Whatever the case, if you don't include personality types in your decision-making process, that home purchase could be an epic fail. So to avoid that, we need to go down the road of personality typing, what appeals to what personality style, so you can avoid these pitfalls and step over the roadblocks and get around things so that warm, happy home is all yours. Stay tuned. Outgoing folks and reserve folks. So when I talk about this outgoing personality style, these folks are fast paced, involved, energetic, optimistic, positive, enthusiastic, woo! Take the leg by the tail, just sling it around and throw it somewhere. When conflict comes along, however, though, they focus on talking things out. Hey Alicia, how are you? Hey, can I help you? Can I help you? Hey, hey, you good? You good? You good? You good? You good? And she wants to slap my hand away. And so if she's more reserved person, she's gonna be a little bit slower paced. Now that doesn't mean she works slowly. That means just she's slow to act or get engaged because she wants to think things through before she speaks. So they're cautious folks, they're concerned, they're reluctant, critical thinkers and always discerning. And when conflict comes along for them, they focus on thinking things through. Hmm, hmm, should I, nope. But don't have all the facts yet and that's their mentality. All right, so where are you on that scale of outgoing versus reserved? If you're outgoing, kind of remember that I'm towards the top of the screen. If you're reserved, you're more towards the bottom of the screen. We're gonna divide you into people person or if you're more of a task-oriented person. People-oriented folks are all about caring and sharing and relationships and emotions and feelings and friendships. They focus on the opinions of others and how they feel. So we tend to be pretty emotional and I am very much a people-oriented person. I'm an emotional guy. You know, I cried during the movie Frozen. Nobody does that, but I did because my daughter was there and she's gonna have a boyfriend one day and get married. And, and she said, pull it together, dad. Anyway, because she's more of a task-oriented person. She's all about procedure and function and forms and programs and processes and analytics. She focuses on getting things done at the end of the day. So when we talk about vacations, what does winning look like? For a people-oriented person versus a task-oriented person, that's two totally different outcomes. I'm the people-oriented person in my family, and my wife is the task-oriented person. So when we go on vacation, it's pretty much to Disney World. That's my wife's favorite spot. So for me, as a people-oriented person, winning looks like getting on the rides and getting some selfies taken with Mickey, what's up, Nick? And that kind of thing. Just enjoying our time together. For my wife, though, no. <laughs> Man, we're gonna be there at the park at 7.05, ready to hit that tram at 8.02. We gotta be in the park by 8.15 because we gotta ride all those rides. It's all about following that agenda that she hands out to everyone, including the two-year-old. Potty breaks are built in, meal times are built in, it's all built in, and everything on the list has to get done, or that's a fail. That's a fail for her. For me, did we make it there and back? <laughs> that's a win. For her, no, it's about getting there getting all the stuff done, making it count, because we, we paid a lot for that money for those tickets. We, we're trying to maximize our time together. So in your world, if you are a people-oriented person and your significant other is a task-oriented person, you can see where this might be some conflict long-term. So now you're finding yourself on the top of the screen or the bottom of the screen, and you're on the left side or right side. So let's define a little bit about what each one of these quadrants mean. So we've got these outgoing task-oriented people, we're gonna call you high Ds or dominant styles. Never met a challenge you couldn't face, love to be in charge, take charge mentality. Then we've got our outgoing and people-oriented folks. Those are our inspiring styles. We're gonna call you high Is. Just love influencing others, oozing charisma all the time, just like to be in and around people, you're all about having fun. And then we have our supportive styles. Those are our reserved and people-oriented. 
kind folks, make super friends. They're great listeners, give you the shirt off their back. They're just wonderful people and the glue of any organization. And then we have our high C's, which are our reserved and task-oriented people. These folks are analytical. They are, think about accountants, lawyers, doctors, those kind of people who are just high-level thinkers. These people are the E.F. Hutton of the disc world. If you remember the old commercial, when E.F. Hutton talks, People listen. That's right, people listen. So C's don't really say a whole lot most times, but when they do, they've really thought through what they have to say, and it's usually like, oh, pretty epic in terms of the, the results of that. Now, we're all a unique blend of these four traits. So we all have a little bit of D, a little bit of I, a little bit of S, and a little bit of C, some in more categories than others. I'm an IS, and my I is really, really high, my S is really high, and then everything else kind of falls towards the bottom of the, of the scale. When it comes to buying a house, each style is looking for something unique. For the Ds, this house needs to show that I'm successful. Curb appeal is huge for these folks. And when people walk through that front door, they want their guests to say, wow, this is amazing. For eyes, we're all about open floor plans. We gotta have plenty of space when our guests come over to entertain and for us to be able to throw spoons at our kids when we're cooking. <laughs> for S's, sameness is huge for these people. For the S's, if the washer was upstairs in the previous house, then the washer needs to be upstairs in their next house. Big pantries before, need to have big pantries after. Big backyards, small backyard, whatever that happens to be. As similar of a house and property that they can get in the new house versus their old house, for the S's, there's a ton of comfort in that because S's don't like change. For C's, it's all about functionality. Everything has to have its proper space. The layout is key. How do we get from point A to point B? Organizational space is critical for them. Storage space, does it have a pantry? Does it have a place to put crafts or whatever their hobbies are? All of those things are really, really important to C's. If they don't have that space and there's clutter, C's freak out and have tons of anxiety. So what do we typically look at when we're looking for a new home? Number of bedrooms, okay, what's the size of the backyard? What's the school district? You know, all those things, and those things are important. I'm not telling you not to look for those things, but when we don't consider personality types, we're gonna miss the boat. For example, if for a D, if that curb appeal doesn't just pop, they're gonna just turn their nose up and go, I can't live in a place like this. I mean, this place looks like a dump. And the inside may be totally gorgeous, but the things that matter to them are gonna be the things that drive their decision making. A house without ample storage for a high C is just like nails on a chalkboard. They can't stand it. So for my wife, who's a high C, storage is a huge, huge piece. We used, in our old house, we had an attic where we could just stick the Christmas trees and all kinds of extra stuff that we weren't using on a daily basis. But when we moved to our new house, we had very limited attic space. And so didn't have a whole lot of big closets or whatever. So we ended up with boxes everywhere. And that was a very, very high source of anxiety for my wife because we couldn't unpack and put things away because there weren't any closet spaces to, to move those in. So enter the four letter word that we're not allowed to say in this video because it's profanity in my house. It starts with an I, it ends with an A, you get Swedish meatballs there, you get home furnishings there. At least you don't say it, don't say it. She's behind the camera. But, but that, place, <coughs> that place is the source of great strength for my wife from an organizational standpoint and a source of hard times for my wallet because my wife loves to go there and just shop, 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 shop because she can organize this and I can put my flatware over here and we can put the kids stuff over here. And so one weekend, we really were in this organizational mode, we being my wife, and so we drove the kids two hours. We rented a U-Haul. This was all five kids. This was, I don't know, five, six years ago. So my youngest was around two and we spent nine hours in that place. Nine hours! We bought 14 nine-foot shelving units with the sliding glass doors and the opaque things so you couldn't see things behind it. And of course, being the good, wonderful husband that I am, uh, uh, self-plug, being the wonderful husband that I am, I spent the next three weekends building those 14 IKEA shelving units. Why? Well, because I'm the man. No, just kidding. Because I love my wife and because all of the clutter was causing her anxiety. So once we got all those boxes off the floor and the doors were closed behind them, we couldn't no longer see them, my wife's stress level went way down. High C's have to be organized in their work life, in their social lives, in their family lives. And they kind of keep everyone going together. Now that's not a male or female thing, that's a high C thing. 
So that can be a high C gentleman, can be a high C lady. It doesn't matter. So we need to get past all of these stereotypes about male and female. Start thinking about what does each person need. And for, for this particular video, we're talking about housing. So again, always keep in mind, what does each person need in any given situation? For house buying, D is about success, I is about the fun factor, so open space. S is sameness as to what they had before, and C's are all about organization. If you want to avoid having to buy another house six months from now, yes, save on all those commissions, Ooh, go down to the description below. I have a, an assessment, very inexpensive tool that will allow you to understand yourself and your significant other and prevent you from incurring all those expenses when you've got to buy that new house six months from now because you bought the wrong one. Get down there, get that assessment. See you on the next video.